Hello. Thank you for that introduction. Um, again, my name is Sarah Foster, and I'm a third year PhD student at the University of York, specifically working in the Stockholm Environment Institute in the Department of Environment and Geography. Um, I was really excited to see that there were there were two or two other presenters working in the arts space in terms of climate change and sustainability, whether that's in education or not. So it's it's a really emerging field, and it's fun to see. Um, so my research specifically focuses on the role of participatory art-based interventions in climate change and sustainability education. But to really narrow that down, my research question really tries to answer how we can use the arts to give young people um, agency and autonomy for environmental decisions, not only now, but also in the future. Um, and to answer this question, I really focus mostly uh, my methodology around arts-based research and eco-emotions in young people. Um, so we know that children and young people are actually more burdened uh, by the indirect as well as the direct impacts of climate change, which also affects their psychosocial uh, health and well-being. And as this field really starts to emerge, we know that certain emotions have received more attention. So um, we actually go down, skip that. Um, yeah, so we have ego anxiety and climate anxiety. And eco-anxiety is a term that really uh, captures the experiences of, of anxiety related to the environmental crisis, while the climate anxiety really encompasses anxiety specifically related to anthropogenic climate change. But we also know that there's a whole range of other emotions besides anxiety. So we know there's worry, guilt, uh, salastasia, and also helplessness. So in a recent study completed in 2021, one of the largest surveys on climate anxiety specifically was uh, conducted with 10,000 young people ages 16 to 25 in 10 different countries. Um, and this was actually one of the first studies to also offer insight of how young people were perceiving their government responsibility, their government's responsibilities to climate change. Um, and about 60% of the respondents said that they were actually very worried about climate change and 45% said that their feelings um, impacted their daily life and functioning. But I also want to point out here that um, as many other studies point to the respondents, this affected more respondents in the global south uh, rather than um, the global north. And we, this, these 16 to 25 year olds or even younger or older by margins are called what's called the climate generation and mostly they are millennials and Gen Z. So as I mentioned, um, this study also uh, asked questions about the young people's emotions in terms of their government's uh, responses to climate change. And it turns out that their, their feelings of betrayal were actually uh, not, were, were larger for these young people. Um, so we know that these are grounded in relational factors. Um, they often see these students Young people often feel layers of confusion, betrayal, and abandonment because of the um, inaction towards climate change. And a lot of young people are now turning to legal actions uh, in, towards their government's failure uh, to provide ecosystems, young citizens, and their futures. So what really helps? Um, on top of the effective and emotional needs for young people, um, we know that Sorry, skip to, skip to things. So uh, the study that I just mentioned, let me go back. The study that I just mentioned was important to address as part of my research because um, as I mentioned, there are other emotions besides anxiety. So I chose to include the term ego emotions to kind of encapsulate all of the emotions that these young people are feeling. Um, but it's also important because it was, I wanted to see if the arts played a factor in assessing if the students felt they could overcome these feelings to for agency and action and environmental decisions. So along with this study that I mentioned a lot and the hog eco anxiety scale also done in 2021, this helped form some of the survey questions that I'll talk about later that I conducted with my students. So what helps? Uh, we know that uh, factors known to protect against mental health problems um, include coping skills, agency, an agency to address and mitigate stressors. Um, in terms of eco emotions, this protection or this uh, yeah protection often comes from having one's feelings um, viewed and heard and have a voice. They feel validated, respected, and acted upon um, by people in positions of power. 
Um, but what about the students who maybe don't want to protest, don't feel comfortable in large cloud, crowds, don't want to go in front of these big government um, and, and protest? So why the study at this time? And that's kind of the question. So on top of the effective and emotional needs for young people, the national curriculum in the UK does not really specify for teachers how or in what way they need to teach about climate change and sustainability in their classrooms. And on top of that, the arts are slowly being squeezed out of schools and undervalued as a space for critical thinking for these two particular subjects. But we can also assess this, uh, this research um, and these methods for arts organizations and um, informal environmental education uh, spaces to use in their in education programs. So in my reading and my literature review, I really focused on the need for creative and um, experiential pedagog pedagogies in environmental education. And around that is really trying to imagine, give the students imaginative tools from going from the what is to the what if. So really it's about the creative process that they're going through, not the end product. So my methodology kind of toes between arts-based environmental education and arts-based action research through participatory arts-based approaches that explore young people's equal emotions and environmental activism um, through place-based transformative learning. And something I'm adding on top of this is something called artography. Has anybody heard of that before? So artography is really a um, self-reflective practice. So A is for artist, R is for researcher, and T is for teacher. And so I really, as this is more of a reflective practice research, I wanted to put my thoughts into this of how we could use this further on down the road. Um, so as an artist, I do work in theater a lot. Um, I'm also obviously in research, so how does this research help in future academia? And then um, in informal spaces, how do I work these methods in as a teacher? So uh, for my actual methods, the first part of my research um, was undertaking how and why creative practitioners and artists use their chosen medium with young people, um, whether in an education setting or not, on the to topics of climate change and sustainability. So I did this through semi-structured interviews um, and have connected with a wide range of artists, including um, a ballerina, opera, theater and drama, creative writing, poetry, sculptures, muralist paintings, and even other visual artists. So um, this is actually a local um, York-based uh, ballet teacher who created um, a program called Mother Earth. And what she did was she was in the middle of town and asked children to go around York to pick up all the rubbish that was around York and put it on her. So that's her, her quote unquote costume. And then she created a dance around um, the trash and things, the rubbish that she put on her. And so she's also working with young people around workshops about body movement and climate change and sustainability. So it's, an, it's interesting. The main part of my research is actually through three different York schools as case studies. Um, one, my first one was uh, geography year nine form. And then my second one was an allotment club. And the third one is an eco society. These students are all around uh, year seven to nine. And what I did was I focused a lot of are learning on the river systems in York, so River Ouse and River Faust and the environmental issues that, they were, that we're facing in York around the river systems. And I created uh, six to seven workshops that I went in each week and kind of scaffold learning up until uh, we used um, what's called devised theater technique. So the first one was the eco-emotions that I mentioned before. Uh, eco emotion survey that I mentioned before. And then the first workshop I go in and I kind of assess their prior knowledge um, with focus group questions on um, how they feel about the environment, what they know so far about environmental issues, um, and then also how they feel about art in general. Because somebody coming into their classroom and saying, hey, we're going to do this theater piece, that can really scare them sometimes. So it's kind of building that trust with them that this is going to be a process. I'm going to be here. We're going to work through it. The second workshop was really about um, the story of the river systems in York. So it's a cultural, it's cultural geography, right? So the, York is there because of the river systems. So really creating that storyline for them and working through the three pillars of sustainability as well with them. 
um, about how York, the river systems are used in the economic, environmental, um, and social aspects for, for, the, for the students. The third workshop was actually a river trip. So we went to the closest spot to their school that the river was, and I asked them to think about the story that we had learned about and where they fit now. Where do young people like yourself fit into the story of the York River systems, uh, not only in the past, where we are now, and how it could be used in the future? And then the fourth workshop was really talking about art and activism. So how do we use art for activism? How has it done, been done before? Why are we using it now? Why do we think it's important? How is it different than protesting and, and, and compare and contrast those? And then uh, the last two and a half workshops, uh, we used what's called a devised theater, which is applied theater technique. So the students took everything that they learned and adapted um, a fairy tale or a folk tale that still kept the same characters or storyline, but adapted the environmental issues that they were learning about um, of the river systems into that story. So they wrote the script, they put on, they're in the process of uh, rehearsing it now, and at the end of this, they are actually going to be performing it in front of local council members in New York, environmental educators, um, and other people who feel that um, are, they felt were important to hear the story of these, of these techniques. Uh, so just a little bit about my results and analysis. I'm still in the process of gathering a lot of information. So like I said earlier, I did semi-structured uh, interviews with creative artists and practitioners. I've also done inter interviews with the teachers that I've been working with and the students. I want to point out a couple of the um, quotes that the students have, have uh, said to me during their interview. So, um, at the end. So creating a theater piece really helped me manage my emotions because the characters were feeling what I was feeling. So being able to dress like a character and being able to feel the same emotions that they do, it made me as a young person feel like I could protest in a different way and make a difference in the world that we wanted. So uh, what's next? How does this really relate to what I'm doing? So moving forward, how does this relate to educational policy, not only in the informal sphere, but in the in informal sphere as well? Um, what is the role? So does this give them a voice? Uh, it, does it allow them to feel like they have part of activism without protesting? My question that I feel like I'm going to have to expand on is when will we see the long-term results of these creative methods being used? Um, and how can these methods influence uh, practice for the teachers, both, both in the classroom? Um, I am working on a toolkit with a creative practitioner to, um, that will have teachers involved in it and how to actually include it into the curriculum in their everyday lessons. Um, yeah, and then again, how do I use, continue to use these methods in my practice as an artist, researcher, and teacher? <laughs>